It's a crowd here. Oh, we got something interesting to look at. This is the DT Land um, Digital Discovery, and it's actually um, both the logic analyzer with um, different output signaling and uh, actually smaller power supply options. So, um, yeah, let's get it unboxed and start with it. Looking at it. So, anyway, here's the box, and let's see if we can somewhat keep it in frame. box. So, that has two parts. So here's unit. Oh. Oh, I'll put these up. Look at that later and let's see what cables we get. So there's a USB cable. And then what looks like to be cables are a bit stuck. Anyway, it comes with the standard standard cables. So there's one set like this. A little bit different than described in the instruction. And actually, this is a yeah, high speed digital input. So, there. And then there's digital input outputs. Digital input outputs on both sides of the unit. So, that's how that looks. Well, it's got one connector to be connected to connect on there. Another one there, and another one there, and then it has the USB connector there. Quite a nice little package. And that's for the big connector, and then I don't know what the logic is, we're only providing for one side, but that's the way it's provided as a standard set. But you can actually there is one um, connector type which they call a high-speed high connector adapter. So that has, um, uh, this, I haven't really got good pictures of it, but it's, it's like a PCB that um, connects into here. And then um, it has twisted pair cables individually per um, input, so you can actually run. Yeah, it's more like dedicated when you're hitting the limits of the speed of this thing than get better signal feed into the device. So anyway, documentation is purely online. And um, this is the start page. And uh, if you scroll down, then you actually find that also the software is available online and that's um they use the generic software waveform so it's you access this waveforms resource center to download the software and um and we also have the reference manual online also here we have quite a um de in-depth description of all the functionality and into the connections and uh, support circuits that are implemented in the actual device itself. So. But I won't bore you with that. I'll we'll just show the uh, waveforms um, start page also. And then if you scroll down, then you'll actually find it here. The latest installers for all operating systems. They actually they have Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux variants supported. 
So this has lots of features, but let's go let's go through some of the main stuff in general level. So in digital logic analyzer it can um, you have 24 channels available and sample rate can go up to 800 mega samples per second. That's uh, okay with the high speed adapter and that was what I actually talked about. That's not included in the standard package. So. Well, we'll actually take a little look at that because I think you could even build one of those yourself if you really have the mind. And um, I mean, basically, they talk about voltage range from 1.2 volts to 3.3, but it's um, actually compatible with 5 volt um, TTL logic um, when when the um, when the it's used as inputs channels. This has some um, 2 gigabits of DDR3, uh, so it actually captures the, the sampling on, on the um, device itself, which is very useful. has bus analysis like you'd expect from most what you can analyze, SPI, y 2 c UART, CAN, and blah blah blah. It has then a digital uh, pattern generator, 16 channels. And all kinds of bus output counters and custom stuff. Multi-purpose digital I.O., 16 channels. And buffer algorithm passion pattern generation. And then it has the protocol analysis oh, that, that I already mentioned. Um, ah, programmable power supplies. So voltage range 1.2 volt to 3.3. Maximum current limit is 100 milliamps. But you can actually power uh, like your test circuit from here. Ah, under limited forms. And then it has a um, script editor. Um, supported instruments are all, and then the, la the language type is JavaScript. So you can write programs to actually make the device do stuff to automate the device and it has some um, cross triggering supported instrument logic analyzer pattern generator this is actually when you get into devices that have multiple functionality then it's actually quite common that like when something happens in this part of the instrument then it will tell the other part to start something so uh, I'm not sure uh, to what extent the it's connected together, but um, that's usually what it means. Yeah, and then we already looked at what hardware's um, provided. Just have a little look at the um, high-speed adapter. So I mean, basically, the high-speed adapter is a combination of um, these type of uh, twisted pair cables with an extra resistor in one of the terminals and then this plugs into a um, to a circuit board that's then plugged into the actual um, device and then, so this means that you can actually push the push the measurement um, frequent uh, the, uh, the, the frequency that you are sampling to a higher level to the maximum of what the device can handle so then you actually need to get a little bit more advanced with the probe and this is actually quite common in higher end instruments that you actually have a twisted pair for the um, probe cables and then um, their individual per signal and then each signal has its own ground so then you can ground the signal um, you know, the signal pair can be grounded on um, the device and on the unit but if you're doing more like low-end hobbyist stuff and you're not pushing the limits of the um, of the frequencies you're trying to analyze then uh, you can usually survive without but as I said you could actually um, uh, duplicate this it's not that difficult to actually create this um, yeah don't even know if you need to make a circuit board but you could probably make something equivalent to this in terms of um, because it actually gives all the dimensions, so you know, you know how long the probe cable should be and stuff. So, yeah, but anyway.
or you could just buy the, the this this you can buy the um, the circuit board uh, yeah pre-assembled plus the um, set of um, pro cables you can actually buy as an, as an additional access yeah for, for the price it was actually surprising you don't get any grabbers so it just terminates them onto this so you can plug it into something so. So that's a, that's something that's not included in the box so well, let me get to the price um, I, it depends where you buy it from also but um, it's not yeah from a hobbyist perspective oh, and I think it's actually when I bought it I thought it was relatively competitive but it's it's still around two hundred and fifty dollars delivered so and about the same in euros if you when you get it home so um ah, it's not it's not the cheapest if you were looking for logic but only logic analyzer functionality and then this is a bit over the price though but that since this is a bit of a combination device with with programmability also and it's in a very compact format it, that's it's not that bad well installed software initial plug-in so it seems to at least be alive so anyway, when you start the software, then it seems like the um, light goes from blue to um, green. So it's the <coughs> first um, test setup. So we put the Arduino Mega here. And we um, dump one. We generate one signal, and it goes into the first digital input. And I thought we'd just have a look at the software using that as a test. So anyway, here's the software, and this is kind of a idea behind the software. It's like a multi-device software, so. The intention is that this can be used with other devices also and um, the idea being that you can um, actually have the supported device functionality on the side here and it has a quite extensive help functionality available directly and then um, you can actually get access to further information up here a few more important info and then they have this kind of concept where you can like execute all the all the different instruments at one go. Uh, not really certain how that works. Um, then you have like application op options and other details. And then it also has a has a menu, uh, workspaces, control settings, and then the window and help. But the main features are accessed through these buttons here. And this is a kind of a workspace idea, so you, you can set up a workspace with different functionality and then you can save it. And then you can like reload that workspace um, as needed. And um, the first thing to look at here is to look at supplies and then here basically, this is, this is the most important from the digital I.O. perspective that you um, set up these threshold voltages and the main voltage. Now, actually this, um, as you see, theoretically it doesn't support 5 volts, but if you have this threshold here then uh, it'll work with uh, 5 volt incoming um, data. And then here you have some of the options to control the um, the um, status of the certain um, digital I.O. pins. Oh, let's have a look at the um, logic part. And in here, what you can do is you can um, you can run a single shot, or you can run it continuously. And um, it puts data in buffers. So every time you take a sample, then basically it fills a buffer. <coughs> and then you can choose the sampling frequency, and then how many bits it uses for the sampling. And what inputs. You have different modes, like simple or pulse or protocol. So let's add a, cha a signal channel. And then take the first one there. And you can also like rename these. Call that D zero. Take a single shot, and 
then the issue is that it doesn't out of scale. So let's pull that back like that, and then we take another single shot. And you see now it comes. Uh, this of course is ah, a feature, and so the one actually has to adjust the um, sampling frequency to actually match the signal when it's coming in, or otherwise one gets a bit of wrong view of the signal. Well, here we see the one single signal that's coming in. Then you have different measurement options. Um, so you can like take from there to there and that will give you information including the frequency. And then there's another option so it like clicks on the appropriate state change. And there's this one where you can click on one and it gives you like for one one full um, phase it shift it takes um, all the measurements in one go. And you can show the entire capture, so it puts it in the center in the window. And then there's some other options here. You can change colors and plot width and navigation stuff. And if you go to the file menu, you can export this data. External file you want. So let's have a look at a more interesting signal. So this is um, basically simulating a control signal which goes up and then the signal should be stable and valid for the period of the control signal and when it goes down again it you know relates to, reverts to some other state. And um, then you have a glitch in that signal, uh, two millisecond. Yeah. And of course, in this case, I have it repeating, but usually glitches are phenomenon that might come and go. So you actually you would like to be able to trigger on such an event. So you can actually do that by um, using the mm, pulse option here. So if you click on that, and I'll show you. Have a look at the window. <coughs> so what you can do is you can actually have two options. So you can either um, try and trigger on it. So you say the source is this one, digital input zero, and then you say you want to trigger on a negative edge, but you want to trigger on a on a pulse that's less than four milliseconds. Or you have another option which uh, is used also that you actually just um, you don't want it um, uh, triggering on <coughs> uh, pulses that are shorter than that are shorter than a specific amount. So you can actually go into timeout and you can say okay what polarity it is then um, more than so then you can actually if you put here if you put the um, two milliseconds and negative or actually more logical if you say okay you, you you don't want it to ever trigger on such a signal so then you can actually say okay negative five milliseconds so then it will actually just ignore this glitch completely which of course make lots of engineers happy because they never want to hear about glitches that usually lead to months if not years of work <laughs> but anyway if we use this option here then um we will then be able to actually trigger on such a phenomenon. And then we can just um, switch back to the main window again. There. And then we can actually run the single run. And then it triggers, and then here's the trigger point. Oops, just trying to show it. So here you see it's the zero point is. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and um, yeah, that's very useful if you're 
actually trying to track down problems or you actually have a situation where your digital signal is actually by its nature it comes from some transducer or whatever and um, it has regulations that say that um, if I as a transducer send a digital signal then um, it has to meet certain timing minimum um, timing criteria to be accepted and um, means that you can actually filter out um, yeah, other glitch pulse type stuff that's coming down the line. So, nice. I was actually happy that I found that this uh, system and software actually supports those two modes of operation. It's not always the case when you have a little bit more cheaper logic analyzers. So, and then I set up the Arduino Mega to um, transmit I2C to traffic bus traffic and here we just have a basically just set to trigger on the first time the clock goes now and, and this is a, a program that every five seconds it scans the bus addresses uh, for um, i2c devices so we can see that it, um, uh, the clock here and then you have the data up on top and of course now since it's not defined as a protocol <coughs> um, it really doesn't show anything extra Oh, well, we just go over here and we right click on data in and then you select I2C. So, and then we get this little window, and here you can say what is the clock which one is the clock and which one is the data but since I actually have it the other way around I'll do it that way and it's 7 decimal and then I just say add so let's see what it looks like so if we zoom in then we will see the difference so here's the um, basically analyzed to I2C traffic and then you have the um, clock, and then you have the data. And then of course, you have the raw. The, I still kept the raw inputs also, but they are identical. So I could have actually removed these two. They really don't have much of a job right now. And so then it also breaks down the protocol and it says, okay, here's a knock, and here's the stop bit. And Here's the um, uh, of course I'm not a hundred percent familiar with I two C traffic. So WR probably means something. And these are addresses I think because you get thirty hex, thirty one. And probably the addresses that are being scanned. And then if you take the view menu events, then you can actually break down the signaling to its component parts. You know, get them what time happens what. And you, and you click on it and it gives the appropriate location. So, of course, if I was a little bit more into the structure of I2C, then I'd probably find this very useful. But it doesn't really say that much. But it's still useful to have, so you actually can see direct you know get directly to the location you're interested in. It's weird that it doesn't stay when you click on it. It just jumps. Aha, okay, so it's dynamic, so it depends on if you're actually in the pulp in the um, graph view or your I'm scrolling here. Anyway, that's a useful tool to have to, and then of course it has very lots of different other buses that it can, uh, or, uh, traffic that it understands, can break down to its component parts. So anyway, yeah, let's have a little look at pattern generation. So if you hit patterns, then you get 
are these tab windows and here you can set up <coughs> a set of signals and I already pre-prepared an example so this is peak to peak peak to peak peak to peak and um, so I just defined that this is a type clock and it's one kilohertz and this is a constant of always one and then this is a random signal of one kilohertz and then um, to test it I ran it into my other logic analyzer that I happen to have so as you see here we have the clock and then we have the constant one and then they have random um, there are also other options for this so here when you add the thing that you can actually say do you just want to have a standard signal or do you want to have a bus which is an ITC I2, I mean a serial bus of some kind and then if you want to emulate ROM logic so you can make a um, read only memory um, logic table and have that emulated um, through this pattern generator so that's a very useful functionality Anyway, this is the simplest form of function. You, you come in here and into the patterns and then you define the signals you want and you define what type of signal. And there's also a custom also available so you can actually build your own, own um, signal type. And then, um, yeah, then it spits it out and then, as you say, I can pick it up in another device which happens to be my other logic analyzer. So anyway, I hope you found this useful. Of course, I didn't cover all the um, details of the functionality that this device has, but um, I'm thinking I'll save that for various projects I'm going to be doing over the, over time. And um, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm 100% happy with the software implementation, but I mean, it at least it exposes the functionality that's available in the device. And it's a very compact device. So, anyway, um, we'll see it in some real action over time, and um, catch you in the next one then.